Hey everybody, this is Nico at Locofy. Today I'm going to be showing you how to export Figma designs into a Next.js application using Locofy AI. Locofy is a tool that allows you to export Figma designs all the way into your production-ready front-end code. I'm going to show you the entire workflow, and this is not a tutorial. This is a speed run to show you how fast you can build applications using this tool. Uh, this is the app that we're going to be building today. It's a messaging app, pretty similar to WhatsApp. I called it WhatsApp Clone. And this is the app working on my local Next.js project. As you can see, it's responsive on the horizontal end, as well as on the vertical end. And we have conditional rendering on that navigation, as well as a drawer that comes out and inputs that are working. So let's get started. So I'll get right on to the speed run. So what you need to understand about Locofy is that it inherits the responsiveness of Figma, meaning that if things are responsive on Figma, they will be responsive when you export them into code using Locofy. So the first thing I'm going through is I'm adding auto layout to all the frames. And auto layout, if you know, is based on the flexbox and the box model that web design has. So I'm adding auto layout and I'm making things responsive for this Figma frame. Now, as you can see, I've been adding auto layout to a couple of things and I'm filling containers to fit the horizontal and the vertical spaces. As you can see, the header and that input element at the bottom, I'm making everything fill the horizontal space so that when I resize the frame itself on Figma, it's pretty responsive. So now I'm gonna focus on vertical scrolling. And after finishing up with this right container, which is the chats, I'm gonna move forward to editing the left container. I'm now gonna clip the content of this messages container and inside where messages are, I'm going on the Figma prototype and setting the orientation of the scroll to vertical. I'm going to duplicate the messages so Figma recognizes that it has a scroll view. And now I'm going to go to the left side. Now I'm going to keep adding auto layout to the left frame and I'm going to fill the available space. Then I'm going to set the chat icon to an absolute position so it sticks to the bottom right. And I'm also going to add some constraints so that when the window resizes vertically, it stays to align to the bottom right of that relative container. I'm going to keep adding auto layout and fill to these inner contents. And I'm gonna set that header to be filling the container and finally adding some margins so it looks like the original designs. Finally, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate these elements so Figma recognizes that it's a vertical scroll. And I'm gonna clip the content of that outside container. And again, the messages container, I'm setting the scroll behavior orientation to vertical. So now we're ready to prototype on the Locofy plugin. And when I open it up, you'll see that if I preview this, there are some scrolls there. But I immediately notice that there's an issue with the container filling the available vertical space. So I just select that container, go to Advanced Style Properties on CSS, and I set to Height to be 100 View Height. That will make sure that our main messages container responds to the vertical size of the screen. And as you may notice, our scrolls are working and our vertical resizing is all good to go. So now the next step is tagging the input elements to make our designs more live. So that's where the Locofy tagging system comes in. So I'm gonna tag these inputs as, well, inputs. Uh, I immediately notice that this lower input doesn't have auto layout on its main container. So I'm setting auto layout to the outer container and setting the text to fill. Now I'm gonna tag it as an input again with no specific uh, library styling. You can add material UI and others, but now I'm not gonna add any styling. And now we're ready to prototype again and open up the preview. And if you take a closer look, the inputs are now working. Now I immediately noticed that they have this weird outline, so let's remove that. The way to remove it is just select the text element, the text input that you tagged, and go to styling and go to the very bottom where it says advanced CSS properties and set the outline to be none. I'm doing it again for this lower container. Go to styling, advanced properties, outline, none. I'm going to click done. And if you see now, there is no outline. So our inputs are finally fully working. Now the next part of the process is making our app responsive, not only from a horizontal perspective, but also from a conditional rendering perspective. We want to hide this messages container when we reach a certain breakpoint and open it up as a drawer. So I've created a drawer container 
which I am now going to tag as a drawer. I've just duplicated the original one and I'm tagging it as a drawer. And now I am targeting a button. I'm tagging it as a button. And I'm going to select an action to this button that opens up our drawer. So I'm going to actions there and selecting our drawer. And now I'm going to preview this. And as you can see, well, this is not responsive yet, but if I click the button, it opens up the drawer. Now I'm going to hide this messages container on tablet. So I'm hiding it when it reaches that breakpoint. And I'm going to preview that to see if it works. So when we reach the breakpoint, it hides the left chat and I can open up the drawer. Now I see some issues with responsiveness regarding the header as well as that warning message. So I'm going to make this fill. I'm going to make that fill too. So it responds appropriately. And the next thing is this warning message. I'm going to select the text and I'm going to make it fill. So it's responsive. And when it reaches the tablet, instead of making it fixed, I'm going to fill the available space with that warning message. So everything is working. When I resize, it's all responsive and our warning, our encryption message is working as well. I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm just going to select it and I'm going to add some additional margins so that it looks a little bit better. On tablet, I'm adding the margin of 20 pixels. And there you have it. It's responsive, looking great, our inputs are working, and everything is working as expected. So now that our designs are ready to go on Figma and properly set up with Locofy, I'm going to export these designs to the builder. I'm going to sync and I'm going to view code in builder. This is going to open up and this is where we're going to be building the components and exporting the code to GitHub. As you can see, everything is working as expected. So I'm going to go ahead and sync the project with my GitHub repo. I'm going to connect to GitHub here. And I'm going to create a new repository called speedrun messages. I'm going to confirm and branch. And finally, I'm going to push to GitHub. This is going to create a new repository on my GitHub account. Then I'm going to go to the repo. I'm going to copy the code, open up a new terminal. I'm going to go to my projects and I'm going to clone this project that I just exported from Lookify. I'm going to go into the project. I'm going to open it up in Visual Studio Code, install dependencies, and then I'm going to run the project. And there we have it. We have the full project working on a Next.js app on my local machine. So this is all working as I expected to. The responsiveness is working as well. So you can see our conditional rendering is working there. Our scroll views are there. And our bit inputs are working just as we expected to. So now I'm going to head over to a code and I'm going to see the exported code that Locofy generated. And as you can see, it's generating just a single page with everything that we've exported. And we don't want that. So I'm going to go back to the code and we're going to start creating components to make this code more in order. So the first component I'm actually going to create is this messages container. So I'm clicking create components of this messages container. I'm just going to call it messages container. And as soon as I create the components and I'm going to create another component, call it current chat container. Then I'm going to go back to my messaging app and on index, you'll notice that the components were automatically created and imported into the index file. And this makes the code way more modular and better because now I'm creating components of everything and it's clearing up my code so that I can create more components in order to export the highest quality code the tool can achieve. Now I'm just going to go around for the next few seconds creating components of everything but on your own project you can make as many components as you want. You can also detach components if you don't want any and you can play around with this until you have high quality code that you're ready to integrate with your business logic. Now as you can see all my components are pretty much good to go and I'm going to be going over and syncing the project with GitHub. And the sync is pretty seamless because this recognizes automatically 
the previous repo that I've exported to, and you shouldn't have any conflicts coming out of this. As it's finished loading, I can just push to GitHub and it's going to load all the files and just update the repo that I already have exported. And this is going to be synced with my local computer after I hit the command git pull. And you're going to see that in a second. So that's ready to go. That means my GitHub repo has been synced with Localfy. So all you got to do is go into your local Next.js running application and do a git pull. And all of our components should be here showing up. And this makes the code great because everything is now modular from the perspective of a developer, which means you can integrate business logic pretty easily now here. And our app is running the same. It's working just as we expect it to. So that was the WhatsApp clone speedrun. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know on our Slack channel if you have any questions, issues, or any feedback. Uh, the tool is right now free to use. It's on free beta. So feel free to go to Figma, fire it up, log in and start localifying your designs. If you want to learn this tool, just follow our YouTube tutorials, our documentation. And if you have any questions, just follow up with us on our Slack channel. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the video and happy coding.